Hey y'all, welcome back to video five or step five in my series on how to get started homeschooling. If you haven't watched videos one to four, go back and check them out. And then if you are interested in hearing about step five, then hit that thumbs up button and stay tuned. Well, today is actually, this video is actually going to be a two part video. The first part of the video will be for step five, part one, and then the next video will be step five as well, but part two. So here is why. Today, step five is all about scheduling out your school year. That means the year, the week, and the days. And so there's a lot that goes into scheduling those out. And to prevent this video from being extremely long, <laughs> and I'm trying to make these little bite-sized pieces for you, we're going to break it down into two parts. The first part being how to schedule your school year. So there are a couple of variations and different ways that you might consider in scheduling your school year. I did a video on how we do year round homeschooling. So that doesn't mean that we're year we're schooling every single day, 365 of the year. No, what year round means is that we don't take any major super long breaks, like two months in the summer. Um, before we start another school year. We just basically continue on through. And so in that video that I will link um, up above and down in the description box for you, um, I go through and explain exactly how I schedule out my year round homeschool year. So um, just so you know, between school years, I only take three weeks off. So the longest we ever take in um, a break for school is just three weeks. I have found that to be the sweet spot for my pa family personally and my children that if we go any longer than three weeks for any kind of break in the school year, it's harder for us to get back into the school groove, even for myself. Um, it's more of a struggle to get back into the routine and be happy about doing school and all of that. So three weeks is our max break time, but it could be more for you or it could be less for you. So that's another thing that you're just gonna have to kind of um, figure out and work out as you go. So as far as scheduling out your whole school year, some of the options that you can consider are year round schooling, and I will link that video for you to check out. Another thing that you can consider is Sabbath schooling. And this is essentially year round schooling, but it's like you take, you do five weeks of school and then on the sixth week you take a break. Then you take five weeks of school and then on the sixth week you take a break and you can keep you keep doing that throughout the school year how i do it is a variation of that as well but i also um, follow the public school calendar also which is another option for you you might just be you know just not comfortable with going at it on your own and so you just might want to stick to the local school calendar and that could be just fine for you there's nothing wrong with how you schedule out your school year. And if you're used to the public school calendar, then, and you wanna follow it, then good for you, go for it, do it. <laughs> so um, option for you for planning out your school year would be to follow your public school calendar. Also, when you do look at your whole school year, another thing that you're gonna consider is the state requirements in your state. Um, if they have certain days of the year, like if you need to school 180 days or um, so many days out of the week, whatever the case may be, that's something that you wanna consider in your planning out your school year. So what I like to do is, first I like to get the big picture of our school year. So I'll look at the whole year and then I will break it down into terms. For me, it's three terms. We school 36 weeks. I don't know how many days it is, but it's three terms and it's six weeks, six, 12, 18, and that can't be right. 12 weeks, 12, 24, 36. Yes, <laughs> it's 12 week terms. So I break it down into the whole year. I break down the times that we're going to do school and when we're gonna take our breaks. And it's a variation of Sabbath school. It's a mix of Sabbath school and um, the local public school and year round, I kind of do all of it. <laughs> and then I'll break that school year down into terms. So we have the first 12 weeks, the second 12 weeks and the third 12 weeks. And then I will look at the first 12 weeks and that's where I will focus. I do one term at a time 
and work my way through each term. You can, at the beginning of the school year, go ahead and schedule out your whole school year and I do a variation of that as well. I do schedule out the whole school year in some insta instances, but then uh, in other instances, I don't look past the first term. So that be, might be kind of confusing, but <laughs> that's what's so lovely about homeschooling and the freedom to schedule how you see fit. It's unique to every homeschool family. So the way I do it might be different from the way you do it. I just share you my personal uh, homeschool schedule to kind of give you an idea or a basis or a framework to work from in creating your own homeschool schedule. So when you're scheduling your homeschool year, you look at the whole picture, you look at the whole school year, and then you can break it out down into terms. I do uh, 12 week terms. You could do six, six week terms, depending on how many weeks you need to school or how many days you need to school, if that's something that you need a requirement to fulfill, or you can do it by nine, nine weeks. However, you can break down your year into shorter terms that you can focus on for scheduling out your weeks and your days, because that's what we're gonna be talking about in the next video, part two of step five in planning out your school year, is breaking down those terms into weeks and days for the whole term. So. Some advantages of doing it um, term by term. So like you'll plan out a term and then you'll go through and do the school year for those 12 weeks, nine weeks, six weeks, whatever you choose. Then when you get to your break, you will go back and plan out the next term. The advantage of doing it this way is that there's regular evaluations in your homeschool. So if, thank you. If you're regularly not getting to something or a subject or some curriculum isn't working for you or the schedule isn't working here or there, you can tweak things in your weeks and in your days to adjust and accommodate those things that aren't working out the way you envisioned in your mind when you scheduled ahead of time. So breaking it down into terms can help with that. Another uh, advantage to scheduling it term by term over the course of the year is that you never truly get behind in your scheduling. Whenever you schedule stuff out term by term, if you get behind in your schedule, the next term you can adjust for those things that are falling behind. Whereas if you did it for the whole year, you never get to evaluate and you're always trying to catch up if you do get behind. So those are all some things that you need to consider and start with. You can check out my video on how I plan our homeschool whole year and then um, consider breaking it down into terms. And um, the next video of step five, part two, we're gonna be talking about how to break down those terms into weeks and days to schedule out your school year term. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. Go ahead and get started on that. And when you're done scheduling out your school year and breaking it down into terms, come back to the next video, part two of step five for breaking down and scheduling out your weeks and your days for the first term and so on. I will see you in that one.